Hello everyone, Dr. Suresh here and in this video we will be talking about glycogenolysis. In our previous videos we have spoken about the glycogen synthesis and here we will be talking about glycogenolysis. So glycogenolysis is nothing but breaking down of glycogen. So which conditions we uh, require glycogen breakdown or it undergo breakdown, right? So when we need energy, so when, uh, when we are under starvation, when we are in shortage of uh, uh, glucose concentration, the circulation, in that conditions, the stored form of glycogen has to undergo degradation and that degraded glycogen will form free glucose. This will be entertained to be sent to circulation and from there to different parts of the body based on their need. Right. And initially, we have already discussed in our previous videos that glycogen synthesis will be taking place in liver as well as in skeletal muscles. Right. So, this glycogen breakdown also now will be taking place in liver mainly and some extent in muscles, right. So glycogenolysis is nothing but degradation of glycogen to glucose 6-phosphate in muscle as well as in liver to form free glucose. You see here glycogen structure we have already said it is a compact structure okay with the help of glycogenin the protein okay the sequential addition of glucose and making alpha 1 glycosidic linkage with the help of glycogen synthase and with the help of branching enzyme which introduce 1,6 glycosidic linkage make a complex or compact or molecular structure right now to break this we need same the enzymes which break the 1,4 glycosidic linkages at the same time the enzymes which break 1,6 glycosidic linkage so then only we will be getting free glucose so in the picture you see here in the representation of glycogenolysis how this debranching debranching and um, that means how we have in branching, we are adding bonds, in debranching, we will be breaking the bonds. Okay, the bonds mainly here are 1 4 glycosidic linkage and the branchings that is 1 6 glycosidic linkage. You see here gluco, uh, gluco, uh, glycogen, okay, which is the blue color and the purple color. Okay, the purple color indicates 1 4 glycosidic linkage. Okay, and the blue color which are having this is known as 1 6 glycosidic linkage. Right. So now here the enzyme, the main enzyme that is phosphorylase which comes into the action and uh, removes some of the shortage form of glucose units from the branching path. Okay, you see here phosphorylase what it is doing, it is converting one of the enzyme into glucose 1 phosphate, one of the glucose into in the, the branching form to be in, uh, converted into glucose 1 phosphate and it shifts that uh, removed glucose units from the branching side to the regular stem okay regular stem you see here this from here this phosphorylase removes 1 2 3 3 glucose units okay and shifts them to main regular stem okay and making 1 4 glycosidic linkage okay and one glucose unit will be relieved as glucose 1 phosphate again there is another branching enzyme glucon transferase that means debranching enzyme what it will do this debranching enzyme removes 1 6 glycosidic linkage. Remember, phosphorylase will remove only 1 6 1 4 glycosidic linkage and make again 1 4 glycosidic linkage. But glucon transferase, what it will do? It will remove whatever the branching point is there. It will break that branching point, okay, and removes free glucose, okay. But in case of phosphorylase, you will not get free glucose, okay, only glucose 6 phosphate will be produced okay that is the difference between debranching that glucon transferase and phosphorylase phosphorylase can form only glucose 1 phosphate okay but in case of glucon transferase it will form free glucose okay without any phosphorylated form okay again this debranching enzyme keeps on working okay and it removes one of the glucose units at the branching point okay once these okay branch glucose units are rejoined to the main stem the phosphorylase will come into the action Okay, and removes the free glucose units, right. So, as we discussed, this process will be taking place in liver and muscles. So, we will see how this glycogenolysis and glycogenesis will be uh, correlating in, in organs like liver and muscles. In first, we will see in liver, okay, following a meal, that means you have excess of glucose removed from the portal circulation and stored in glycogen by glycogenesis, okay, and conversely, between meals, blood glucose level will be maintained within the normal range by release of glucose from liver glycogen by glycogenolysis. So this way liver, so when you are having excess of glucose levels, liver will store them as 
uh, take out the glucose, extra glucose, and store it, it as glycogen. And when you are skipping a meal or in middle of the meals, so to maintain uh, blood glucose levels like whatever 100 to 120 milligrams per deciliter, so sometimes it will go below the normal. In that condition, liver will allow glycogen to break down and it forms free glucose and the same to the circulation to maintain normal blood glucose. So in muscles, what is happening? The function of muscle glycogen is to act as a readily available source of glucose within the muscle itself during muscle contraction. So muscles are one of the largest uh, what to say you can say they are like uh, skeletal muscles keep on functioning to uh, make contractions right so the muscles which cannot release glucose into the blood because of absence of glucose 6 phosphate so that is the main difference liver can able to release free glucose but muscle cannot release free glucose why because liver has got the enzyme glucose 6 phosphatase okay whatever whatever the glucose 1 phosphate converted to glucose 6 phosphate and glucose 6 phosphate to free glucose by glucose 6 phosphate. This enzyme present mainly in liver, but it is absent in muscles. Okay, so this is a competitive exam question oriented and viva based question also. So, why muscles couldn't able to synthesize free glucose or release free glucose? Because muscles lack an important enzyme that is glucose 6 phosphatase. Okay, muscle glycogen stores are used exclusively by muscles. It will not be available for other parts of the body. Okay, and liver. So, by knowing the demands of the various parts of the body, it will break down the glucose, make free glucose and send through circulation. But, whatever the glycogen stored in muscles, it will be broken down and it will be exclusively used by muscles for continuous muscle contraction. So, that's all about glycogen breakdown. Thanks for watching. Thank you.